everybody and welcome after the lunch break. I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you are all refueled and ready to go with our post-lunch session. We will have three speakers and two talks. The first talk will be by Marcus Katarina Brechtel and Philip Kaluza. And the title is Reproducible and Replicable Data Science in the presence of patient confidentiality concerns by utilizing Git Annex and the Data Science Orchestrator. Marcus Katarina is a developer and team lead in the research group of Professor Janne Vereshield, building research infrastructure for the German network of university medicine and the German Center for Infectious Diseases. Philip is a diploma informatiker working as a freelancer. They have been using Git Annex for over 10 years and are happy for the chance to deploy it in a scientific context. Since uh, this is a talk that will go into multiple facets, uh, we have scheduled 40 minutes for this talk. So it's over for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going to give a really quick outlook. Um, so we're going to talk a bit uh, who we are. Thank you for the introduction, but we want to tell you guys a bit where we're coming from, uh, who our customers for this project are. Um, we want to introduce uh, a somewhat formal problem statement. And uh, then uh, after that, Marcus will tell you a little bit about the architecture of the data science uh, data science orchestrator, sorry. And uh, mm -hmm. I will introduce uh, our core uh, concept there with a reproducible execution environment. At the end, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the next steps that uh, we are hoping to take in this project. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Philip Kaluza. Uh, I graduated from Technical University of Brunswick in 2010 and uh, have worked in different co capacities but mo uh, since then, but mostly as a freelance IT consultant. Um, I do development, security, system administration, so what we call nowadays DevSecOps. Uh, I'm also a Debian maintainer, though not very active at the moment, uh, and have been using Git Annex since about 2012. I'm gonna hand over to Marcus, and he's gonna introduce himself. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Um, uh, I'm Markus Katharina Prechtel. I focus in my work on digital research infrastructure building. I'm a team lead in the DevOps team, secure research platforms uh, of the uh, research group cohorts in infectious diseases and cancer research uh, from Professor Vereschild uh, at the University Hospitals Cologne in Frankfurt. Um, I'm also a member of the German Center for Infectious uh, inf Infection Research and also other, uh, other, other stuff, I do a lot of projects. And um, especially relevant for this talk, I'm a member of the DZG uh, Working Group Research IT. So this is also our sponsor for, for this work, um, the DZG Working Group Research IT. Um, our goal is to uh, make uh, research data accessible to enable research on the on major public health issues. Um, so, what are the DZGs? Uh, this, uh, these are the German health research centers. They um, there are seven that focus on uh, major diseases like um, uh, infections, uh, diabetes, cancer, or Alzheimer's. Uh, we are a uh, we are a working group that consists out of uh, developers and um, uh, scientists from these institutions, and we collaborate on creating the solutions together in a collaborative process. Um, so this work is based on this research group a lot. Um, uh, genau. So um, part of this uh, of this uh, re uh, of this working group uh, is uh, and especially relevant for here is the, the so-called data science orchestrator. The original objectives when we started the projects have been uh, that we want to provide a web-based analysis environment uh, to researchers where the data does not leave the institution. This is uh, important because we're dealing with patient data. Uh, Philip will talk about this a little bit uh, in detail. Uh, shortly, um, uh, the creation of this environment should be pretty easy, like uh, the researchers don't have a lot of time, so 
uh, they uh, should just have, be able to apply to, the, uh, to this and it should be provided for them, basically. Um, results of analysis should be uh, uh, back transferable to the institution and analysis uh, should be able to run in different organizations. So um, this is especially important when we have some multicentric studies that are um, uh, conducted in, uh, across multiple uh, institutions. Yeah, so, so the oversimplified explanation of what we're trying to achieve, uh, like before and after. Before, the data and the code is on the scientist computers, and there, there it runs. The analysis run there, the code is there. Also, this does not enable to process highly sensitive data because they're not allowed to be on client computers. So, yeah, it's like it's not an ideal solution, it's not reproducible, it's kind of insecure. Um, uh, depends on the actual setups, but yeah. Um, uh, and uh, the after, uh, what we are trying to achieve, our target state is we want to have a virtual working space for the scientists um, on institution servers where the da data does not leave the institution. So, so, so to say, we want to bring the algorithms to the data. I, I've heard the sentence a lot uh, recently, so yeah. So Philip will uh, talk a bit in detail about our uh, problem statement that we um, that we came up with uh, for this specific problem. Project, yeah, um, yeah. So, so um, uh, Markus uh, introduced the uh, German Centers for Health Research, the DZGs. Uh, which it itself each uh, contain uh, multiple hospitals, university hospitals, uh, that kind of thing, other medical research centers. And, and so this is a very federated st uh, structure and uh, they have uh, certain needs. So in general, uh, most of you will be familiar with, with these uh, FAIR principles, so uh, just some standard principles uh, for reproducible scientific research. Um, so, uh, yeah, research needs to be findable, F, accessible, A, interoperable, I, and reusable, R. Um, there's pretty broad consensus across scientists uh, for this. Um, so you, you might also might have uh, um, heard the, the term uh, open data in, in, in the research um, context. But uh, we are dealing with uh, medicine specifically, and uh, we have a complication there. The, there's a long history in medicine uh, going all the way to the Hippocratic Oath um, that the doctor should uh, yeah, um, have confidentiality or agree to a confidentiality across what, what he learns about the patients. And um, it means... Uh, there's a certain expectations and expectation by patients, not everybody, but uh, enough patients that to have a wide uh, study participation, um, you need uh, to guarantee a strong discretion. And as strong as possible uh, is always good. Um, uh, additionally, if you just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to collect the data, but I'm going to pseudonymize uh, it, so. Um, Delete the patient's name. Just give it, give the patient a number, uh, demo number. Um, the problem is this is often revertible. So uh, sometimes not even the birth date is deleted uh, of that data. Also, uh, think of somebody with a rather rare disease, and you still have their postal code, which you might want to have to look at certain cohorts, uh, living conditions, etc. But uh, yeah, now this pseudonymization uh, can, can pretty uh, trivially be reverted because you only have one patient with that sickness in that postal code. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and so that, that leads uh, uh, to a conflict in publishing. Um, so on the one hand, you want uh, scientific reproducibility of your work. But on the other hand, uh, you want to reduce the risk of deep pseudonymization. Um, the FAIR principles uh, uh, introduced the, the word reusable. 
Um, so what exactly do we aim for in the scientific context? Uh, there's a very good book, I think, uh, The Turing Way, a handbook for reproducible ethical and collaborative research. And um, I allowed my, uh, us to, to copy this uh, uh, matrix um, because I think it, it uh, is pretty good. So, so you uh, can differentiate between doing the same analysis or different analysis and, and, uh, and do it, doing it on the same data or doing it on different data. Um, so the, the two cases of reproducible and replicable, uh, according to this matrix, um, is what we are mostly interested in, in the DSO project at the moment. So uh, how do we solve this conflict? Of course, we need to compromise somewhat. Um, internally, we've been calling this fair light. Um, other institutions have other words for it. Uh, uh, other publications uh, phrase the problem somewhat differently, but in general, yeah, uh, fair, the, the four principles are, are good, but accessibility, uh, we need uh, to um, somewhat condition that. So basically we say, okay, the raw data um, that is collected in the hospitals uh, from specific patients, um, access will only be granted where it's absolutely necessary, and the person uh, the, the data scientists uh, data scientist needs to be vetted. Uh, reusability, um, so meaning we, we collected some data, but we want to want to use it for different statistical analysis. Um, also needs to be reviewed, uh, usually by the use and access committee of the hospital that collected this data originally. <coughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna skip the quote. So can we do better? Well, in IT, and uh, if you guys are familiar with the Debian project, you, you've uh, heard about this. Uh, we have this uh, concept of reproducible builds uh, for code. So have a confidence that um, th that code that I just compiled uh, leads is the same result of the code that somebody else compiled uh, sometime in the past. Um, and, and you need to uh, work or engineer your environment to allow for, for this kind of um, confidence there. And we want to, to in, in the DSL project, we want to do something similar for the data analysis, um, which means we need to re have reproducible builds of the data analysis environment itself. And how we do that? Do, do we do that? Of course, with lots of Merkle trees, as might come to a surprise if you guys attend, are attending this conference. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we basically said, okay, let's put Git Annex at the core of this. Um, then we want to build that uh, yeah, trustable aggregation and execution environment. Um, one of the key tenants is this, and every, once the analysis is defined and can be run, it can be rerun in basically the same execution context. Um, we want to keep very good records, uh, especially what, what code are we running some, uh, some analysis on, but also on what data exactly. And we want uh, to have a machine readable form to document policy decisions regarding this uh, by the um, Use and access committee, for example. Uh, the side effects uh, of this are um, that we can do partial data blinding, so a data scientist would publish their code fully, um, would publish the data checksums, and uh, would publish statistical aggregates. And uh, with this stuff in the original publication, somebody who is, is later granted um, the ability to process the raw data again uh, can have a high, conf or, or should be able to arrive at exactly the same results. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it also leads to uh, diffable code. So if the use and access committee has said, okay, this kind of uh, analysis is okay, and, and the ethics committee has agreed this, we can do this analysis on this code, uh, and now somebody else wants to improve on that, uh, we can review diffs. Uh, and uh, because of the automated policy decisions, um, 
yeah, a lot of reauthorization doesn't need to happen or can happen in, in a much smaller scope. So, and, and, and another thing, because of this federated structure uh, of the DZGs, that uh, where, where we're uh, trying to implement this, uh, it means um, this analysis can run in a federated manner. So, the, if, if a hospital participates in, in this um, data science orchestrator framework, they can run uh, code units and, and don't have to give out the data that they collect themselves. So I, I thought I'd throw a little slide in there what's different to what you guys are doing because um, yeah, we've, we've heard uh, uh, quite some different use cases over the last two days. Um, for, I feel like for us uh, somewhat of a difference is that, that we don't use Git Annex to ease data access but, but we restrict it uh, using Git Annex. Um, but hopefully in, in a way that, that leads to, to better research and, and better practices. Um, we're not concerned with, with high performance uh, considerations at all currently. Uh, might come in the far future. And, and we're trying to solve the social problems. On the one hand, the, the problem of the data researcher, undergrad student uh, having private, pa uh, private patient data on their personal laptop, and on the other, uh, on the other hand also, the social problems that stem from having this very federated structure with uh, different uh, centers that are uh, doing policy decisions. Uh, yeah, Marcus will tell a bit about the architecture. Um, so uh, let me give a, f a few words first uh, about our architecture. So uh, we, um, this is kind of a complex uh, deployment story we have here because we have a lot of components. Uh, I will give you a, um, kind of a tour through the whole ar architecture. Um, we will go from the beginning to the end. Um, and so, and what's a general thing here, we want to build reusable microservices that are kind of flexible to use because in uh, the institutions we have and also in the use cases, we have kind of differing um, requirements. Uh, some projects might need uh, federated analysis. Some might need um, some might need to have de uh, specific deployment um, scenarios that need to be um, uh, that we need to take care of. So um, this is kind of the use case for the reproducibility that we're uh, currently uh, that I want to show you now. And every rectangle in this uh, coming slides is uh, to be supposed one microservice, uh, one, one container basically in a one or less deployment scenario. So let's start with the image factory. This is uh, kind of the the distribution of uh, software and code, um, it's kind of a Linux distribution, uh, Debian derivative, uh, um, uh, in form of a OCI container. We have some s normal uh, stuff here, uh, Git repo with all the code, uh, then we build an OCI image from it. Uh, we do some uh, security reports. This is uh, pretty important because we want to make sure that there are no security problems in, uh, inside of this. There are no viruses. Um, uh, yeah, it should be like from the known, from the current known, um, uh, from the current known state. There should be no problems in, inside of this code. And then uh, this gets reviewed, the security reports, and then we do a version release. There could be different variants for for this um, for this uh, data science images uh, because we might have different um, uh, use cases. For now, we want to build one big image that kind of uh, uh, solves most of the use cases we currently know of. So we don't have too many variations there, but um, it is possible to uh, to do variants here. So um, let's take the next we want to view inside of the institution. Um, this kind of builds up. Uh, there's a lot of space left. Uh, this will fill shortly. Um, so at first, our researchers uh, request an environment. This is just a simple web service. Um, uh, they can fill it out. 
um, from the context here, this institution is, uh, is this is an um, internal network there. So uh, we, I don't want to talk too much about policy. This is more about the uh, IT architecture, but um, we can say that this is basically not accessible from the public. We might, uh, the request might be redirected from somewhere else. So there might be something in between there. But uh, the management service is kind of um, the interface where they can uh, can uh, manage this whole requests. And then we have the institution data manager responsible for for the process. They can approve the requests and document the decisions from the use and access committee there. Uh, so what decision led to uh, approving this access, basically. But the use and access process itself is kind of a different problem. That we don't solve here. So what happens next? So um, we, when the uh, when the request uh, got approved, we uh, get uh, our executor comes into play. The executor looks for approved requests, and when they occur, then it will start deploying the uh, execution environment. And for this, it pulls the uh, the image that we created in the image factory and um, spawns our uh, reproducible execution environment. Uh, this re reproducible uh, execution environment consists of different components. Uh, first, we have the actual environments. We have an interactive environment that uh, is accessible, accessible by some web console, uh, for example, JupyterLab, Studio Web, or uh, some uh, other web-based IDEs are possible here. Um, uh, then we have uh, our, uh, some local uh, repository store for the, all the data that is handled inside of this uh, environment. Uh, we have some dataset fetcher that is possible to go to our store. I think I forgot the right side. <laughs> so at, at every institution, we have um, primary data systems. So this is the systems where the patient data is, uh, is stored. This might be a, a, a routine data. It might be uh, data that's uh, conducted in a form of a study. It could be it's very diverse uh, image data, uh, lab data. Um, so what we propose here is that uh, these primary systems, there are ETL pipelines that extract this data and stores it inside of a Git Annex um, uh, repo. So this, uh, this, um, this data is uh, archived and accessible inside of this institution for this purpose and also stored for long term, basically. Uh, and these pipelines, uh, they, they do that. And so we have this repository auth proxy. Um, so this reproducible uh, execution environment is kind of a firewalled and computationally isolated environment. And it only has two entry points. The one is the WebView controller, and the under other is the repository auth proxy. This repository auth proxy basically makes sure that um, that only policy-based uh, access to the uh, to repositories is possible, and then we have this WebView security console. This is something we research for. Uh, so we looked into a solution, um, uh, kind of what we're uh, looking at now uh, to implement is uh, to do something like this. So we have a virtual screen uh, and um, a virtual WebView application that um, is able to access the, the secured web services. So what we are, what we are doing here is we, uh, in the browser, the, the user sees uh, what's, uh, what the application is, then it, this gets to a, a web server that's run, uh, to a web browser that's running inside of the, uh, this security console. And then um, they only get basically the images of this, uh, of this web and also only the um, inputs from the, from the interactions like the keyboard and mouse clicks uh, are uh, put back to this environment. So we have some, uh, some isolation here. Um, this is kind of the proposed architecture. I don't want, will want to go in uh, into too much detail about these components. It's all open source components, but yeah. Um, 
And one additional uh, feature here would be that we are possible to uh, create an audit log of what's happening there. We can basically create a video of uh, what everything that every interaction can be logged and uh, audited. Um, okay, then. Um, uh, so then the researchers uh, made, uh, have the possibility to uh, interact with this environment. They can uh, do some explorative uh, analysis here inside of this interactive uh, environment. They can put in their code, they can develop their analysis and create results. So, and now we propose that there's a continuous analysis container. So basically they commit their, their changes and then uh, in the side of this continuous uh, analysis container, all the whole um, pipeline they developed gets rerun. So when, when it's, it's developed, it's rerun via some CI/CD system immediately. So we know that the, uh, that the, um, that the results that are produced here are um, they, that they that they um, actually can be created by running the uh, analysis again, and these results that are re reproducible can be uh, pushed to the outgoing data store. Then uh, you could also push uh, inter uh, explorative results. This would also be possible, but the kind of proposed uh, workflow that we uh, that we recommend to the scientists then is to uh, to first uh, make a reproducible analysis and then uh, publish these results. So uh, now these uh, results go out to the outgoing uh, results store. We have some separation here, so it this does not get mixed up. Um, and then the results are brought to a data outlet review console. So the idea here is that every uh, data that is supposed to leave the institution is um, manually re reviewed. So we have some kind of diff. If nothing has been published before, then basically the whole outgoing data needs to be reviewed somehow uh, manually. And if we uh, already did that, then we can just uh, review the changes that's happening there. So we have some high confidence, uh, so we know that uh, when the data is supposed to leave, uh, it has been reviewed before, uh, so there's no private data left. Uh, and when that, uh, when that review has occurred, then um, we uh, publish this results in form also of a Git Annex repo. And uh, so we have that uh, reviewable by the public, and uh, they, the researchers can actually use that inside of their publications. So this is kind of the idea of our architecture, and um, um, we, want to, we wanted to give you some more insights into the um, way we designed this reproducible execution environments, uh, especially in, uh, f f from the structure. Um, and there, Phil will say some few more words. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go back one slide and, and point out uh, just right of the uh, nice Git Annex logo, there's the continuous analysis container. And um, uh, the idea there is also uh, that on the one hand, um, we might get new data coming in, and on the other hand, um, when we have this federated use case where, where the um, data processing is done in the collecting hospital itself, um, these, both, uh, these two environments will be equivalent, basically. Um, so, so both these use cases uh, need to be um, uh, kept in mind for the RxE. Uh, yeah, so the, the re reproducible execution environment is, is uh, basically the, the core uh, of the data science orchestrator. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to do GitOps, uh, kind of. We have one source of truth uh, in the GitOp repository. Um, we have a, a YAML file format that uh, documents um, in, in detail uh, what all the things that go into the analysis code. And um, also, this Git repository references the data repositories. 
input data, output data, um, as you had seen on, on the previous slide, are split up. Uh, we also have provisions for intermediates. Um, this might be uh, handy for, for um, exploratory statistical analysis uh, and for handing off uh, um, some, some com more complicated analysis between one scientist to another. Uh, we just went with back bet best practices and have a vendor subtree. Um, Though we are a bit torn currently between doing uh, Git sub modules there and, and really doing Git subtree um, for archival purposes for long term uh, documentation of what happened when where it's probably a good idea to to really keep keep all the trees in 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 the vendor subtree and if we can create automated modules. Uh, to update things as needed, um, that will probably be a good user experience. Um, yeah, so what are the invariants? Uh, most of that has been said. So we do, we build an OCI container um, of, of that concrete environment uh, that's going to run the calculation. Um, we're running it as container. We might uh, move over to virtual machines uh, after the development phase for additional isolation um, and, and this container shouldn't have outgoing network access of course um, yeah we're basing everything on, on the Debian, Debian stable with a pre-selected uh, static package set and uh, that's what the that OCI image builder will add up on and uh, even for that base image we want to record the exact hashes yeah um, this is just an example uh, for our contract with our users. Um, we had hoped to prepare a little demo uh, for this conference, but then last weekend something happened around SSHD that uh, kept me busy quite a bit. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is uh, this is what we are showing today. Um, uh, structure is pretty clear, uh, and uh, we're we're kind of torn between existing file formats for for uh, recording the state but um, for the user experience we are aiming at with the with the web and and with uh, di different uh, people making policy decisions and with different level of technical know-how we felt it's it's really important to have that one central uh, yaml file that records everything um, and, and that that really gives a good overview of the state and then you can can diff that yeah, and, and this this project, for example, would would include a Python module to do the actual analysis. Yeah. So, still an open question for us is: um, uh, we will res heavily restrict access to the raw data, but that doesn't mean we absolutely have to be have separated Git Annex branches. So if we um, if we do the the access control and uh, at the level of, of a git annex get, so will we um, maybe is it a good idea to to ha in the sense of, of having this whole state of the world be represented represent, represented um, in the published project? Maybe it, it's a good idea to have a. Um, have the one git annex branch that has the uh, tracks the incoming and the outgoing data. Uh, this is not a, a policy decision we're going to make ourselves. Uh, it depends on what feedback we get uh, once we have a prototype up and running and do some some sample uh, research project with actual data scientists, uh, especially data scientists with a medical background, not IT background. Uh, so let's see and. Uh, depending on that decision, we actually might still end up uh, punting a lot of that work to data led run, but uh, this is not, at, at this uh, current moment, not decidable yet. <laughs> yeah, um, so we wanted to give, give a quick outlook for the next work. So uh, for most of the components, we have just a, a simple proof of concept work done um, this quarter and uh, in the, 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 this quarter that just started in the next one, 
Um, there will be a lot of development and, and integ integration work happening. Um, there's uh, just recently very renewed interest uh, from our partner at the other DZGs um, that uh, said, okay, yeah, well, now the political climate ha has changed, so now I can afford to put a lot of my own time into that. Um, so we're very looking forward to what, hap what will happen there. And um, after this is done, then, then we want, we're kind of planning for a phase two um, long term uh, of that project and, and really solve that federated data processing use case. Um, so I think we, we've laid, laid the groundwork for that, uh, but the proof, as I say, is in the pudding. So let's see how, how it will work out once we get to uh, measure at the, in the real world. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Um, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Otherwise, please feel to contact, contact both of us. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> We do have time for direct questions from the audience, and we have two of them. Hi. Uh, thanks. That's a great talk, and it's given me a lot of ideas because I'm building kind of a similar platform, but much simpler, and I'm thinking whether this will be ready by the time uh, we want to do. It will be 2025, so you know we're doing ETL work in this year. Uh, Converting into Fire, for example, I don't know what format mm -hmm. you're using, uh, but Fire in sort of a flat format, so, so that so, 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 so. yeah. But like I'm exporting into Parquet, so that you know people can use you know data out or Git Annex. But yeah, this looks great. So you know, like if it's open source, when it's open source, parts of it. Yeah, so let's, let's come into contact. I would say yeah. so we could uh, see where we can collaborate. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering uh, how far you got with um, the issue with uh, the Git Annex branch and potentially having multiple ones. Uh, that's that's something I've considered a couple of times in in projects. And if uh, if you've done anything more with that, um, or is so it just an issue? Sorry, or if it's just like an issue that you're aware of. Um, yeah, we're, we're aware of it. Um, as we said, we, we're both uh, also privately users of Git Annex, um, so we can um, anticipate uh, some things uh, based on that experience. Um, we, uh, we looked at it, and I, I looked at the um, data led uh, uh, collections uh, with, that uses Git submodules internally. Um, and and uh, it might be a good fit if this is uh, something that doesn't need to be tracked uh, or, or reviewed a lot. With, uh, so, so basically, it, uh, having in the moment, in the moment we add Git sub modules, we complicate our audit log. We complicate the user interfaces for reviewing um, the state or differences between two states, and um, we kind of want, want to get some experience how uh, non-technical people react to, to the concept per se before making a final decision on that. So, so just saying, okay, everything is tracked in this central Git Annex branch, and uh, just when you do a get, you, you get a 403 not allowed. That might actually be the, the simpler uh, way to go about it. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. I suggest we take the remaining questions to the panel discussion. And I would like to invite our next speaker, Kyle Mayer.